I'm just waiting on London to come on. Um, let me know when you're there, London. I'm going to explain something about camera angles. Are you there, London? Are you with me? <sighs> I'm not awake. i got to go back to sleep for a while. London, London, where is that you? Are you there? I see one on. I want to talk about camera angles and how important they are. Um, All right, first thing I'm going to talk about is distance from a subject. In other words, this is the, the sculpture. And if I step back about six feet, I get the correct size uh, on film of the actual sculpture. But as I get closer to it, watch how the face narrows like the face is being pulled into the camera. All right. Um, this is just one example. You see how like that distorts the face? Well, and it makes it more narrow and elongated. That's because it's pulling that face at you. And then as I back off, you're getting the actual width and correct look of the actual sculpture. Now, whenever you're sculpting and you're sculpting from pictures, you have to remember like I just want you to look at the eye line. I want you to look at um, the eyebrows. All right. Now, I'm going to get a little closer. Eh, I'll stay back here. All right. If I, uh, if I go up just a little bit, see how much dramatically it changes the actual uh, expression on the face? compared to when I go down underneath of it. All right. Look what happens to the expression. It absolutely changes your perspective on how this mask looks or sculpture looks. If I have a down shot and it's off to the off the right a little bit and you're looking up, it's going to give you a different perspective of what you think that mask is supposed to look like. You know, it's, it's going to change your, the way you sculpt it. Um, I always try to find a picture that gives me in a direct shot, but not just that shot. I want to see all angles, if possible, of the, uh, of the uh, subject of, of whatever I'm, I'm sculpting. You want to get all angles above, below, below, you know, side to side, profile, profile is huge, <clears throat> very important. Um, the problem is, London, if you're on, hopefully you're there. The problem is when we have these still shots, and if the, if the shot's just a little bit, you know, of a, of, on a strange angle from whenever they took the picture, however they took the picture, it can throw off your sculpture. It can give you a perceptive that the face is more crooked than it actually is. You know, if I look at it this way, the angles are different. 
if I look at it dead on, it's it's just a different, you know, it gives you the real perspective. Um, but even the dead on shots don't reveal the taper of the face coming forward. It doesn't reveal that. That's where you have to get your angle shots to know exactly, and your profile pictures, to know exactly how that profile is. Um, if you don't have more than one picture to go off of, uh, then I wouldn't recommend even trying to sculpt something from pictures. You have to have a lot of angled shots. And the problem with Michael Myers is, as artists, we only have a handful of good pictures, unless you're getting the pictures from another artist who has already attempted or made a really nice version of the mask. <clears throat> and that's if they are willing to give you all their angled shots and all the pictures. Uh, myself, I don't like to copy anybody's artwork. In other words, if, like say Nick Malpagano, there's nothing I would do that, to copy any of his masks. I would not copy his mask. I'm trying to copy the original. So I am going with the original pieces, the original artwork, the original mask. Um, and uh, I use other things for reference, but I'm never going to copy their mask. That's something I would never do, it's just out of respect for myself and their work. So, but my main thing is you have to always think about the point of view of the camera when it took the picture, whether it's low, see what it does to the face, just dropping the camera down by like maybe eight to 10 inches. It changed the whole perspective of that face. It made the eyebrows a little higher. Um, just that, just watch him, watching this going slow. Just look at the change in the expression. All right, it's just the perspective. You have to always think about the perspective from the original photo, wherever the photo was taken from. So don't always look at those lines. Like if right now, if I go this, if it looks like a straight line going across the eyebrows, not quite, because this, this eyebrow is a little lower than this one. But it looks like a straight line. But as soon as I go down, I can't see this one. Now it looks like it's a little bit up. Looks like it peaks at the top of the nose, you know, and then drops down. Um, you know, so just remember that whenever you're sculpting, uh, going forward, it's very important to uh, uh, remember that the camera, the picture that you're actually... Um, the picture itself, uh, you have to pay attention to the actual... Um, how the picture was taken, you know, in what position was the... Was the picture still shot taken look at look at the difference in the face by leaving it a little off to the right and downward it makes the face look like the angles different like the it's crooked you know it just it just looks looks wrong well it's not gonna look wrong it's just that perspective of the uh of the sculpture um and the other thing too we have embedded in our minds if, if anybody's on here that's actually into sculpting and really is, is learning how to do this. Sort of, we have embedded in our minds the still shots that have been created and in, from the movies. Um, there's certain angles that the mask was shown from, and that's that's what's our memory. That's what we remember. We remember the shots that you've seen the mask. So <clears throat> we're always trying to replicate those angles. Um, whether it be like, you know, him, you know, just different angles. I mean, I can't think of off the top of my head, you know, you had the, 
you had the uh, the phone where he was on the phone, and that was pretty much a I'm trying to remember the shot. Hold on. Actually, that shot was taken from like about like that when he was uh, when he was on the phone after killing Linda and throwing her in the closet, <laughs> strangling her with the phone cord. You know, you, you pretty much got that shot there. Um, you got a profile shot when he killed, I guess his name was Nick. I forget what the guy's name was. Who uh, He stabbed into the closet, you know. I'm talking about Halloween 1. <clears throat> you know, there's only so many photos that we have <clears throat> available to us when sculpting this uh, mask. Uh, sculpting, yeah, sculpting of Michael Myers. Uh, you have to remember, if that's the only thing we can go on, that's pretty much, uh, it's very important to look at all the pictures as much as possible, not just one picture, because that's not going to give you the true dimensions. The hardest part of sculpting this mask and even mine, I still am not real happy with the jawline. Um, am I changing it? No, because I don't have the answer yet on how to sculpt that jawline. Uh, at some point, as I learn, the longer I do this, I'll be able to make that change and change it in, you know, what it needs to be. I'm close. I'm very close. But I'm, I'm not quite there yet, and I know that. Um, <clears throat> I'm happy with the eyebrows and the eye cuts. I'll say from this part up, I'm very satisfied with the sculpture. All right. Uh, from the tip of the nose down, that's where, um, and it's not about the details. Like the lips, they look perfect. The, uh, the nose itself looks perfect. It's the actual shaping of the entire jawline is where my question marks are. And, uh, you know, until I have better reference pictures and uh, possibly a, uh, a sculpture, or not a sculpture, I'm thinking about getting the life cast mask. I was talking to somebody on here about getting a light, the actual William Shatner <clears throat> life cast. If I can get that, I can replicate that life cast. But I don't know if I want to really replicate the exact life cast. I just want to get the jawline right from it and the, and the uh, pers perspective. In other words, like does the jaw, does the chin stick out a little too far? Or is it going back far enough? I don't know those details. I have to get a, a really good profile shot. And I have the profile shots. And my sculpture does line up with those profile shots. Um, but just something looks a little off to me on this. You know, others are saying, oh, no, it's perfect. And, you no, know, there's something just a little bit different on the jawline. And I haven't put my finger on it yet. I've been working on it and working on it and working on it. I've retooled this thing now four times and to get it to where it's at. And uh, retooling, what happens is you find out more details as you're doing this mask. You find out, you find some more pictures. You know, you find some really, really good pictures. And it seems like I always think that, okay, there's no more available to me. And all of a sudden, I'll discover a few more. Then I'll discover a few more. And I keep learning little things uh, as I keep discovering these, these newfound pictures. So that's why you end up retooling your sculpture multiple times, you know, as you're learning how to do this, Michael Myers. Michael Myers is not an easy sculpture. 
I don't care how long you've been doing it. I don't care. Well, no, it makes a difference if you've been doing it a long time. I've been sculpting this thing for two years. Uh, my first one was horrible. I only spent three months, or no, I'm sorry, 30 days. My very first attempt, I spent 30 days. I thought, my God, that's a long time working on a sculpture. Hell, that's nothing. This sculpture here on the retool alone was 12 months. On 12 months of sculpting, retooling this. Um, this the second retool, this is the fourth retool. But the third retool was 12 months. The, the second retool was about six months. And obviously, you know, thinking that I had it nailed and then I discovered some more things and then I, I, I learned a little bit about human anatomy and I went the extra mile in that department to really be more accurate with the face. Not so much the details of the face, but human anatomy, all right? So... It's important to learn those if you're going to start sculpting faces and human faces. Uh, better learn some human anatomy, how muscle tissue is and how flesh hangs. Gravity takes hold of our flesh, even in our 30s. Um, gravity matters. You know, there's so many little things that people don't realize when they're... Uh, you know, going to try and replicate somebody's face. This is William Shatner. We know this. Um, but William Shatner, when he was a young man, probably in his 30s, is when he had his uh, face casted. Um, <clears throat> uh, you know, if you look at the scowl, let me show you, for instance. All right, the scowl right here, where the scowl comes into the nose. All right. Well, at first, my first attempt, I'm trying to carve those details into the into the nose, like that little overhang. See that little overhang? Well, if you think about it, it's gravity. Gravity and flesh. What happens to flesh uh, as we age? And you know, we're you know, the scowl comes from expressions on our face. You know, how many times even our, you know, our muscles and our lips that make us smile and frown and all that, that, that's what makes the cheeks do what they do. The cheek marks and everything are just all these little tiny things that you have to analyze on how an expression develops. Like a, a um, I want to say a permanent expression that's on a person's face is developed in just the way their their muscles are under the flesh and gravity and uh, how often somebody uh, smiles a lot, you know, whatever, you know, it just, it, it creates, it, it creates the wrinkles as we age. Um, and uh, anyway, well, gravity sets in. I was carving into this, and I was like, wait a minute, I'm doing this wrong. So then I just stuck some clay, two round pieces of clay, right up into the, right at the, the bridge of the nose where the scalp came into the nose. And then I just started rounding them off, and I'm like, whoa, okay. That looks more natural. That looks like a natural hanging flesh uh, from the scalp. And it gives you a very natural look. Um, you know, these are just little tricks that you learn as you're going. Uh, there's not, there's no way to really, uh, nobody's teaching this stuff. Nobody's teaching my thoughts. When I look at a sculpture now and I can't, I'm showing you what I'm looking at and I'm being honest with you and I'm not hiding where, you know, at least I don't feel they're secrets because they're my discoveries. They're not somebody, I didn't learn it from somebody else. Nobody's teaching how to sculpt. Um, so my advice to you is always pay attention to camera angles. Number one, if we're looking at, at pictures, like all I had to do is, I moved this camera, my phone that I'm holding in my hand right now, I moved it 
six inches, maybe eight inches, just a little bit to the right and downward. And look at the change in the dis disposition of the face. Just going from here to here, six inches. That's six inches right there. It changed the entire eyebrow lineup. Uh, the expression on the face looks a little different. And my point to this is it's very important to make sure that when you're looking at pictures, always keep in mind the camera angle that the picture was taken from. If the camera, if you if you got a picture like, like this and it's a little bit downward, you have to think about that. What's, a, what's that face look like like that? All right. When you're, when you're sculpting something like this, you have to be able to have multiple angles to get an accurate, very accurate sculpture. Um, when a jaw doesn't look like it's, it's, it looks like it's a little crooked, uh, it could be the camera angle that causes that. It's not so much the jaw itself. So unless you have something in front of you that's actually three-dimensional, um, that like, in other words, I have the, I have the sculpture in front of me. If I, if I was another artist and I wanted to copy this and I actually had the, had this thing in possession, like I have the mask here, like I have a trick or treat studios, uh, tots, uh, 2018 mask that I overhauled. Uh, it needs to be done again, but I'm going to do it again. But, uh, I overhauled this and, I have that mask right in front of me. If I wanted to, I can replicate this to a T. I can make this mask with no questions. I know I can duplicate it. I can duplicate. I can duplicate anything that's literally in that I have in possession, because then you can feel the shapes. I mean, I I do. I'm a big time uh, believer in feeling uh, my sculpture. Um, I can, it's funny, I can look at something and feel the shape in my fingertips. It's just, it's such a strange thing. Um, I can't explain it. It's just the way it is. But if I only have pictures of this, it's very difficult to uh, replicate it to a T. Absolutely, unless you have thousands of pictures from every possible angle. And even then, you don't account for size. You know, so it's, it's, uh, it's, and it also depends on the camera angles. So just remember that going forward, guys, uh, camera angles do matter and, uh, it's, it's very important when you are, uh, when you're sculpting something because your camera angle can make something look like it's crooked or a little distorted and yet it may not be. And you just don't know it because you got a bad camera angle. You have to look at it from all possible perspectives. Uh, as many pictures as you can get. And try to... Uh, and try to uh, basically um, sculpt. But don't ever sculpt from one picture and one picture only. Because you can't. You can't get an accurate sculpture that way. You have to do it with multiple pictures. Um, and always check, constantly check, constantly check your sculpture, constantly. Now, when I say check your sculpture, move that head around, really move it around. I know you got to lift the whole armature to do it, but I lift it up, I tilt it back, I look underneath the chin, I look upward on the skin. Hey, London. That's a shame. I'm going to upload this video, so at some point you'll be able to uh, watch this video. But whenever I'm taking a camera, whenever I take my sculpture and I'm looking at the sculpture, I literally move the sculpture in every possible direction or angle that I want to look at it from. Downward, upward, side to side, angled shots, down and up. You know, because like I said, just moving the camera up just a little bit like that changes the entire expression of the face. Moving it down, it goes from being kind of mad to like, 
not quite as mad. <laughs> so uh, camera angles definitely matter. That is so important when you're sculpting. Always think about the camera angle that the picture was taken from. Because nine times out of ten, when something looks crooked, it really isn't. It's usually because the camera angle was just weird. So, but if you actually have, like I said, if you actually have something and like I have this mask right here, I can look at that in every direction and I can duplicate that because it's right in front of me. I have no doubt in my abilities, uh, my lack of uh, ability with this guy right here is because I don't actually have anything in possession that's three dimensional that's literally in front of me that I can uh, sculpt from. It's much easier to do it from that than doing it from a picture. Trust me. Um, that's why this guy's, I think that that's one of the biggest reasons why Michael Myers is such a difficult sculpture to do is because we're all relying on pictures and we don't actually have a physical mask in our possession. But then again, and this is why I say this, if I buy another mask from another artist, do I want to replicate his work? No, I don't. I want to try and replicate what I see on film, just like these guys have done. And just like a lot of guys are making their own masks. They're not trying to copy from somebody else. They're always trying to put their own spin on their mask. And that's what I did with this. This is the Night Creeper 78. Um, <clears throat> And so far, this is the fourth retooling of it. I've changed the eyebrows just from this. This is the this is the, the one that's on eBay right now. But I've already retooled this version to this. I changed the, uh, I lowered the eyebrows the way the original mask is. Um, I changed the lips. This is, these lips are more, they're a little wider. And they look more like the flashback lips. Which I found out the flashback lips look identical to the original 75 Kirk mask. Um, I mean, when I looked at that 75 Kirk mask with uh, Gene Roddenberry showing off Captain Kirk and Spock mask side by side with him in the background of the two masks, I thought, oh my God, I think I found the picture that... Um, Chris Nelson uh, sculpted the mask uh, where he sculpted the flashback mask lips. I think that's where he took his, his reference, was the original Shatner uh, mask. So, I mean, it, it, it really lines up perfectly. It almost looks identical. So just remember that going forward, guys. I mean, I, I'm, I'm trying to teach you guys, but I'm limited to what I know, too, because I've only been doing this for two years. But as I'm learning, you know, I'm taking you guys along on, on the ride, on the journey. Um, the camera thing, I've learned that many years ago on different on different. Uh, things that I had to do. I used to do what they call relief carving into wood. And mainly it was all sceneries, ocean sceneries. Or, and the number one thing I had to do when somebody wanted a scenery of their, say, their own ranch or their backyard where they had a deck and they had an ocean in the background. Well, they wanted, they wanted uh, on, on this particular scenery I had to do on a, on a uh, cabinet, set of cabinets going across the kitchen. They wanted it to look like they were looking out. They were sitting on their deck and they, they were looking at the ocean. So I had to go take a bunch of pictures uh, from different angles to make sure that I had that exact scenery laid out to look exactly like it would as if you were sitting down on your back deck overlooking the ocean. So I had, the camera angles made a difference. And this is why I learned that. All right, London, I see you're still with me. Cool. 
But I was talking about, because of that picture you sent me, uh, and you were showing the lines on, on the camera angles, or it wasn't so much the camera angles you were showing me, you were just showing me how the, the mask looks crooked. Well, I want you to look at that picture real closely and then try to, um, you know, try to look at it from a different perspective. You can't really because it's, you know, you're limited to that one picture. But the reason why it looks so crooked is because the angle that the picture was taken from. So if you uh, change the angle of the picture. Let me see. Yeah, you're here. I see you. Your Wi-Fi is lagging for uh, I'm here still. Not sure if my replies are going through. Yeah, I got your replies. Yeah, you're the only one replying. So I'm groggy. I've got to get some sleep. I'm, I'm tired. I got up too early. But um, I just wanted to address the camera angle um, issue. People don't really understand what I mean by it. But that's why I'm moving this camera around and showing you how that facial expression changes just by changing the angle of the camera. And you always have to remember that when you're sculpting your uh, work. Camera angles matter, matter, and matter a lot. So I'm going to bounce off of here, go get a couple hours of shut-eye yet. Still got to get some more sleep. I'm still too... Too groggy. All right, guys. In London, I'm going to bounce off, and I'll, I'll talk to you later on this evening when I get up. I'm probably going to get up around 12, 1 somewhere around there. Uh, it's way too early for me right now. i got about three or four more hours sleep, and then I'll get up whatever time it is now. I'm not really sure. But I need at least three or four more hours of sleep. I only got like two hours last night. Just didn't sleep well. All right, guys. Peace. I'll see you in a few hours. Oh, and don't remember, and remember, uh, my uh, mask is on eBay right now. Uh, at 6, 10 p.m., the auction is over. Uh, the price is 250 All you have to do is look up Michael Myers mask, and you shouldn't have any problem finding my, uh, my mask on there. It, it's under Michael Myers mask, uh, custom corpses, night creeper 78. That's what you're looking for. Um, so if you guys want to put a bid in for it, go for it. Um, there's quite a few people watching right now. The last time I checked, there was nine people watching and there's been close to 400 views. So it's quite a few views. Um, so, all right, peace, everybody, and hit the like. If you're not a subscriber, please hit the subscribe, and, uh, thank you for, you know, always supporting me here on this channel, and I always try to share my knowledge with you guys, you know, no secrets here, don't need them, don't need them, it all depends on your ability, why, why, why do I need to be secret? You know, I, I can, I make my, I make my sculptures. I share my knowledge. I learn from others too. I pick their brains, but if they ask me to keep something secret from public, I would do that. I don't, I don't share other people's knowledge that they were generous, generous enough to share with me. And if they don't want me to share their knowledge, then I don't. You know, it has to come from me to share what I'm learning. So I'm pretty much learning as I go, <laughs> just like most of us. Sometimes that's the best way to learn, though. That's how I feel. And I'm also noticing something here going on above the eyebrow. Looks like I deformed it a little bit, trying to clear out that eyebrow. So I'm going to have to fix that. Looks like I carved into it. I create, you can see a little shadow right in here, right above the eyebrow. See that shadow? That's not supposed to look like that. That's supposed to come straight in and you won't have that. 
Asylum. What's up, Asylum? How you doing, buddy? Asylum of Fear. Uh, yeah, I'm getting ready to bounce off of here now, but I was explaining uh, how you have to look at your sculpture from different angles. You know, it's not so much just a, you know, when you're sculpting and we're going off of pictures, you always have to keep in mind your camera angles that the picture was taken from. So a lot of people make the mistake of, of uh, making something a little more crooked than it really is because of the angle that they took the picture from. So the more pictures you have, the better the uh, chance of success you will have by looking at it from multiple angles. Anyway, I'm going to say, uh, like I said, you guys have a good day. And if you guys are interested in my Night Creeper, uh, which is, this is the master copy, your theme master copy right here. Um, if you're interested in getting a, the, the, uh, the Night Creeper 78, there's one on eBay right now. And tonight at 6 p.m., the auction is over. There's quite a few people watching it, but right now there's only one bid. I think they're all going to start hitting hard. Uh, maybe they will, maybe they won't. Um, but the closer we get to the uh, final hours, fi I, th I think within the final hours when everybody's going to make their move, anybody that's serious about that mask. Um, so I know it's 6, 6, 10 p.m. tonight. 10 after 6, it it's comes to a close. So, um, like I said, look up Michael Myers' mask. Custom Corpses, Night Creeper 78. That's what you'll, you'll see it on there. Anyway, peace, everybody. And have a great morning. And I'm going to be back up and moving around here probably like 1... One o'clock. I don't know. I'm not sure what time it is now. So I need a couple more hours sleep. Got up in the middle of the night. Didn't sleep well. Yeah, it's, you know, a lot of people are complaining about the Wi-Fi. Wi-Fi has been crappy here too. So anyway, guys, I am going to say good night. Good night. Good night for me. I need a couple more hours sleep, but good morning, everybody. Peace. I'll see you on the next video.